Hi guys, it's Tony from a &E Construction. Today, if we build with a &E, you're gonna be shown how to do a common rafter. What we have here is an 8x2 common rafter. The pitch of this roof is going to be 15 degrees, okay? So what I'll do is I'll mark this out onto a couple of trestles here to show you how we go about it. Right, so the first thing to do is when you're looking at a piece of timber, uh, we're using 8 by 2s as I said earlier. First thing you've got to do is look down the timber. You need to make sure the camber, so in other words, the camber on this at the moment is actually going like this. That's what it's doing. So we need to make sure the top of the camber is always at the top of the rafter, which is this size. That's really, really important. And basically, if I draw that onto this rafter now, it's doing this exaggerated like this, okay? So that camber there always goes to the bottom and that's then the top of the rafter, okay? So this is literally the top. Why did you do it that way around? Uh, reason being, as the weight of the roof goes on, it will just slightly push that down, but it's just, uh, if you did it the other way around, you, you're a ceiling underneath, it'll be really, really difficult then to pull it all out, and plus it'll make your roof look really wavy like this. So yeah. You don't want that. So it's really important you do that. Obviously, if the roof's too cambered like this, then you'd never use the rafter. There's always a tolerance with everything. This is really quite nice on the top, really quite straight. It's just the bottom's got a camber to it. You can actually probably see down this top here, it's actually really straight. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't yeah. it? Whereas the other one has got a camber yeah, to it. We don't yeah. want to be using that, you know? So that's definitely the top. With this common rafter we're using here today, it's an 8x2. Now, the general rule when you're doing common rafters, you have to do your burr's mouth to a third of the width of the timber. Now, this timber here is 195 mil, so a third of that quick mat is 65 mil. So literally 65 mil of mat here. So what you then go to the next is a roofing square. The roofing square I use, this the one. People have different types of roofing squares. There's one that screws here and then has a pivot point where you can actually move the arm. Some people actually use a big roofing square, which is about two and a half foot by a foot. So what would happen is if we were marking out a bird's mouth, what we would do is first thing we do is 65 mil. We need to get a mark that's as close to 65 mil as we can. Now on this roofing square, there it is. There. Now I wouldn't really want to go past that. You see these ones going past. I actually quite like to keep it underneath that mark. Otherwise, all... you're taking more of the timber out, then, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so basically, what I'm doing is scribing that. Now the pitch of this roof, as I said earlier, is 15 degrees. Now 15 degrees is a really, really shallow pitch. And so we're having a certain type of tile on the top of this roof but just so I can show you how to cut a bird's mouth out and everything else. Now, if you can imagine, this is the top of the rafter. Remember me saying, this is the top of the rafter without the camber in, nice and straight. You always then rest the pivot point of your roofing square on the top. And then what happens is then you hold it in firm there and you just move the roofing square out like this. And on, on here, you've got all the degrees of the roof. So you've got five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees. 25 and then literally all the increments between are just different degrees so 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 there you go look there's a 45 degree pitch roof and what you do you you bring that degree to the top of the rafter so in effect we're doing a 15 degree so keep my roofing square tight to there move it to 15 degrees like this and then literally as i've lined it through and then this line here, then from the pivot point, that actually then becomes 15 degree. Now there's two cuts that's really, really important in uh, doing a common rafter and jack rafters and hips. It's what's known as the seat cut and the plumb cut. And the one thing you've got to always make sure you do is make sure you always have a 90 degrees to both of these cuts. So in other words, your seat cut and your plumb cut always got to be 90 degrees. So literally with that 15 degrees that I've just now put onto that piece of timber, from this is then classed as the seat cut here. I literally put my square then onto the back of here like this and line it through like that really nicely. And then that then becomes then my seat cut all the way along here like that. So basically what I've got now is I've got my seat cut running all the way along here. I've then got my plum cut, okay? And as I said earlier, this is 90 degrees. And that's always 90 degrees. Okay, and what I then do further is I just mark that down there. Mark that down there. I like to mark my timbers, just something I've always done. 
what I do, there's two methods. You can either cut it by hand or you can cut it by power saw. I'm gonna cut it by power saw. It's a lot quicker and easier for me to do. The first thing I do is then I change this then to 15 degrees. The other thing is sometimes when you get a plank like this, sometimes you'll have a big split in down the middle. I always make sure I take that split out and then cut back a good six inches past that. It's just really good practice to do that. So we know this is the top, so I literally pull this in line, get it nice and tight to the bed. onto the wall like this, the rafter would come up, whether it be a 6x2, 8x2, and that's what we'd do. So as you can see here, what we've done is this rafter one we cut earlier, is we've got all the housing in like this, we've got it nicely fixed and bolted to the wall here using some concrete screws. And what we've done is you take a measurement from that point there. You see it? So what happens is when you're measuring a rafter, we take it from this point here, and what we do, we measure from this point all the way down here like this, all the way down, all the way down, and we measure them to the back of the wall plate. So, to get to the back of the wall plate, you can actually see here, that's where we would measure to the back too. So just here guys, you can see I've got the tape now right on that very edge corner plate. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the measurement and John's got it there, and you can see the back of that wall plate, it says 2430. That's how you measure it. So you remember, you measure from right up there, the corner point where John is. Hey, John, how are you doing? <laughs> and then you come all the way back down and to the back of the wall plate, which is there. And that's 2430. So what we're going to do now with my template, we're going to actually use that now to mark everything out. So you've just seen how I've marked out this top bit, which is that bit. We then, the measurement that I need is 2430. So what I'm going to do is get my tape, measure from the top of the actual Two four three O, which is really nice. So what I'll do is I literally then place that template corner. And so if you can imagine that mark where I've got is actually, if you can imagine, is the corner part of the wall plate, isn't it here? And that's what that represents there. So all I do is I marry my timber up like that, get it right into the corner really nicely, like that, and then literally draw my seat cut and plum cut because I like these small cuts like this. I like to do these by hand. Run that one through really nicely there. So that one, and then that one. Switch that. And what I'll do is I'll get myself over the top. And the rule is, let the saw do the work. Here, just start it off nice and steady. Just get it going. There you go, look at that. Lovely. Hopefully, then that's 90 degrees. So, what I'm going to do is mark that through. And then mark that off there. What I'd like to do, just because it's a small piece, just start it off nice and steady. Right. Come over the top. There we go. Let's clean it up. So now what I'm going to do is from a wall plate, I know if I measure 400 mil from here, now I can guess to make 400 mil, it's probably about there. Let's see whether I've got it about see right. how good your guessing is. 400 mil, that is, approximately. Oh, oh look, look at, at that. that. What a guess. 400 mil. <laughs> That's lucky. <laughs> So hopefully now that rafter, now we've got it all cut in, sit up there really nicely, slot in, go to the back of the wall plate, 
let's have a look, see how we've done. Offer this up to the back of the wall plate, up onto the housing like this, and then push her in. Now if I have a look at the back of that wall plate, John, see if she's nice and tight. That's good, it's looking That's good. Nice. Yeah, and then have a look at this one on the side here, John. Yeah, come and have a look around here. Looking good. Lovely. And what we'll Beautiful. do, we'll put some fixings through here into the meat of the timber at the back there. Uh, it'll be absolutely nice and solid. But it's a, I know it's a little bit more extra work, but it makes a better job uh, for what we're trying to do. Depending on that joint, it's a nice solid joint, not worrying about it. It's probably took me 20 minutes longer uh, to do all told with the chopping out as well as then the recessing of this rafter, but it gives me a better job. So uh, that's really important to us. So any questions, any comments you'd like to ask, please put them below. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, check us out on Instagram as well. Cool, have a great day. See you soon guys.